Hello, and welcome back to another Continuous X podcast, where we tried to solve for X in the SDLC equation. We're back with Pete Chesna, North America's Chief Information Security Officer at Checkmarks. Hello, Pete. Hello. Hey, Pete. Um, we've seen a trend in the industry and the government space towards moving, moving towards this everything is code approach, infrastructure, configuration, security, et cetera, um, which we feel is a very healthy dev, DevOps mindset. Um, but it can lead to configuration sprawl, and it does require a change in thinking, which is something we touched on last last episode. Um, do you have any advice to our audience who's attempting to adopt this and, and maybe enhance their X as code uh, initiatives? Yeah, great question. And, you know, first is you need to think differently about infrastructure as deployed. So why you may still be able to use things like Qualys to look at the configuration to say, is this secure? Uh, the remedy for it's not is different. Yeah. So you, you go back to that, you know, pets versus cattle uh, talk track thing. Look, you may go and log into a production instance and, and try to figure out what to do, but the do part has to be uh, left in the code. And you you go back and you do that classic repaving. We're going to knock everything over. We're going to we're going to redo it. Uh, so you don't have the configuration to drift. So there are strong reasons to have that everything is code, part of which is that. So I don't have these drifting things that are exactly similar to one another. Uh, and also uh, the scale at which we do these. So in the old days, when I started coding, things were lovingly handcrafted. You, know, you, you look at those pictures of all of the, the nice cables between them, and they're all like, oh, my God, look at that. It's so beautiful. It looks like art. Uh, we don't do that anymore. It's done in code. So the, the thought that you don't have that kind of time, and we're not dealing with one or two or five. We're dealing with hundreds or thousands right. of infrastructure uh, instances so you can't go through and make the change everywhere. You can't go unplug from A and plug into C uh, on every single instance by hand. It will take you forever. You're going to get it wrong. You'll miss a couple. Then what? So the, this thought of um, of having strong controls around the shift left portion of, can I find something that looks at the code to understand what the outcome is going to be? So that's kind of the shift left of my infrastructure is code or my everything is code. And then I've got the scanners like Qualys that come in and say, well, is it the is the result what I expected? And if I don't see that, then either I need a different tool or that code needs to change uh, to get that desired result. Just a different way of, of thinking about it, but it becomes very repeatable. And in our last segment, as we talk about automation, especially in that CD portion of the pipeline that we're saying, hey, I can go plow down the infrastructure and bring it back up in a highly repeatable manner in a very safe way that I know is, is going to happen the same every time because it's not a checklist that someone's following and they miss a step because, you know, someone walked into their office or the cat walked across the desk or, you know, whatever happens in those cases, or I'm under intense pressure because security incident now or outage. Those are things where having things in code that say, this is the way it's going to be. And if that's wrong, then fix it here. That's really the, the the guidance that I have is to embrace that, to say it gets you out of the human problems that you're going to have just because we're people and we make mistakes. You know, we uh, Mike and I have had um, history with the, you know, Brents of the world, if you read the Phoenix Project, where you have the heroes and they are gold when they are, when they're correct and when they're on top of their game. But, you know, the Mack truck theory does apply. If that person goes away, there's chaos um, ensues. So I, I love the, uh, the, the motion towards everything is code. And not only does it remove the heroes or reduce their impacts, but it also allows visibility to the, the entire stakeholder community, if interested and, uh, ability to, to improve the process. Whereas before you would have a configuration manager, you would have an operation person who would, you know, you would say your application's ready and magic occurs and it's in production. That type of visibility is now being opened up to all stakeholders in this DevSecOps cultural transformation, which I think is important uh, for all parties uh, you know, involved. Now, the, the one downside here is that, again, as I think about what I used to do, 
right? So very high level. I wrote first party code. I used to write windows in the SDK. Mm -hmm. uh, so that part is now said, well, now there's second party code. Right. Now I'm writing libraries that are shared. I'm bringing in open source. So I need to understand how to do that securely. Now I've got all that infrastructure concerns. As an engineer, I was never trained to do that. I don't understand how to do it securely. I was never part of the, the people that racked and stacked and cabled right. up and installed operating systems. But if you think about containers, I'm picking operating systems. You think about infrastructure as code, I'm building machines. What's the what's the right way to harden those? We have people that have spent a career on understanding how to harden infrastructure and now income developers and you know it's a good thing because it's repeatable but they're going in and creating this stuff from scratch. How do we make sure that they're enabled to do it properly, that the right tooling there to understand the security implications of it and just help them get better at it. Uh, we're stretching them in ways that you know I I talk of as this kind of continuous knowledge gap is every day there's some new thing that is as code that now I'm going to go do. And, you know, you look at the the simple examples in SDKs. It's like, oh, yeah, I can do Hello World. Well, Hello World's interesting, but secure Hello World is way different. And there's exactly. a whole lot of other things that you need to think about. So it, these this world is great, but it's a two-edged sword that we need to help them do it securely. I've always... Well, thanks, Pete. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Mike, did you want to follow up? Yeah, I, I, I've always looked at it as sort of like moving from the Victorian era of handcrafting to um, uh, to the Industrial Revolution where you're mass producing. And that's yeah. that's really what you're what we're, we're at. And that a lot of us old curmudgeons probably are still in that mindset of of I can craft the best, you know, sidearm possible uh, but then the Colt 45 comes along and then there, now, you, you know, that's you're, you've, you've faced the, the thing, but uh, the, the industrial revolution. But um, a part of me does still miss the handcrafted. This is perfect tool that fits this one exact situation perfectly um, that I built <laughs> with right, my own two well, hands. <laughs> I, I was w working on a product that was one of the first, if not the first, uh, internet driven or intranet driven applications we we had a uh, a product that you would put into iis like before there was iis mm -hmm. and i had a dba that worked on our application team and you know we would go to her and say what you know what is this configure what should this configuration look like and i would get questions like well how many spindles are there and what speed are the disks and i'm like no 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 you don't understand I, what i need is the generic that solves for most of the cases. I need the 80-20 solution. You don't get to know any of these things. Right. And it's the same thing with this X's code stuff where it's running on some other hardware and it needs to be appropriate and good enough. And you don't have those experts that, that are in there tinkering and, and moving things and while well, the airflow isn't right or you know whatever. Uh, you, you need to, to think about the problem differently in that mass-produced world. But there is I, I, I an There is a... Um... Uh, a, a goodness and a, and, a, and a, a good way of looking and feeling about when you when you create something that does continuous monitoring or continuous deployment that takes those configurations and then validates every hour that yo you this is exactly what you said you detailed it was and if you need to change it you just change the infrastructure part of it there's some um craftsmanship there as well that uh that, that hits the spot for the victorian crowd well and as a detective control also if you are assured that there is no drift, then you should be able to measure no drift. Right. If you're in there with your Qualys type products and saying, hey, something moved, that's bad. Guess what? That's another way to detect something uh, nefarious going on in your infrastructure. If everything should look the same, then it should never look different. And that, that's another control point that you can have. Well, terrific. Well, uh, thanks to the listeners for um, listening to Pete's informative information. Um, and we're going to talk about microservices and it's going to put this discussion on steroids when we start talking about, you know, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands microservices uh, running as opposed to the monolith. So stay tuned for our next episode with Pete. And thanks for listening for, to today's episode where we tried to solve for X in the SDLC equation.